Good afternoon. Good morning. Maybe good evening if you're watching this in a recording. If technology works for us the way it's supposed to, we want to welcome you to 13 ways to beat the top agent. Brought to you by the Internet Marketing Specialist designation. You can find us at imsd.net. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash IMS designation. Let me tell you a little bit about what the Internet Marketing Specialist designation is. IMSD is broken down into eight core classes with multiple bonus classes for you, where we give you information on each one of these categories using the models and systems of Ben Kinney and the success that he has had to grow his business using the power of the internet. We give you one hour webinars and each of these categories take you through amazing information, bringing you support and so much more. You can learn all about that on our website, imsd.net. Now, if you are at all interested in learning more about this program, I want you to pull out a pen and a piece of paper right now and write down the promotional code DEFEAT. Yes, we're gonna help you defeat that top agent in the area. So we want you to make sure you have the right promotional code to save $200 off the cost of the webinar, of the program, by taking this webinar and having joined us here. My name is Chad Himes. I didn't even introduce myself. And I am the community manager for the Internet Marketing Specialist designation. You may have heard from me before. You may have posted with me on Facebook and not even realized it was me talking to you if you were talking to us through our fan page. But we are brought to you today by an amazing company, and that's Arch Telecom. And I want to introduce to you Steve Cortez, the CEO of Arch Telecom. Steve, are you here on the line? I'm on the line, Chad. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's good to hear from you, Steve. Hey, it's good to hear from you, too. You've got an amazing company with some amazing products. Before we even get going into all this stuff and bring everybody the information, because Steve, I know from having been on so many of these webinars with Ben that once he gets going, he gets on a roll, and we have limited time. I don't want to miss just giving everybody a few moments to learn about what Arch Telecom can do for them. So would you mind sharing what Arch Telecom can do? Uh, absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity, and thank you for letting us be on the call. Um, my company, Arch, has been around since 92, so we're quite experienced in, in the real estate industry, and we're focused on lead generation and lead management. Um, our sort of flagship product that we pioneered is the call capture, and I know Ben has been using our call capture product for over six years. Um, it's, if you may have seen, where people will put an 800 number or ask for text information on a lawn sign. And it's just a very good way of you giving property information out to people in an automated fashion, but maintaining accountability. So what it does is it will return the information either by recorded information or by text, but it captures who they are. So you don't lose the person that requested the information. And it's very good at listing presentations. It's great at finding sellers because buyers are sellers too. It makes your marketing more responsive simply because they don't, they're not hesitant to call you. And it has a, a wide variety of reports that you can use either for price reductions, um, great tool for showing a seller, you know, look, all my marketing's working. Either we need to increase the value of your home or lower the price. So it really gives you a lot of good feedback of where, what areas your marketing's working in. So we do a variety of stuff, but check us out. Our website is archagent.com. All right, so they can get info at archagent.com is where you're telling us we can get some more information on that. Now, Steve, I'm pretty cheap, and uh, on speaking on behalf of everybody here who's on the call, I like to save them money. So we got any specials we can offer today to everybody? Absolutely. Uh, just for being our guest on the call, um, we will give you a free month of service so you can literally check us out without coming out of pocket. So if you give us a call or send us an email and just let us know that you heard about us from Ben Kinney or IMSD, we'll honor that. That is a great offer. Steve, I really want to thank you for sharing that with everybody. And I want to bring on the line now, well, what we're looking at his uh, wonderful Photoshopped picture here of himself because, you know, I've seen him in person and he's just not that smiley and his teeth just don't shine just that much. But, you know, Ben Kinney is the founder of the Internet Marketing Specialist Designation. Ben Kinney is a friend to all, and Ben Kinney is a foodie. So I would like to bring Ben on the line right now and introduce Ben to all of you. Ben, why don't you say hello to everybody? 
foodie. It's like a polite way of calling me fat. Appreciate that, Chad. Hey, this is a, a cool call for me to do. And in full disclosure, uh, Arch Telecom is not a sponsor of this call. Arch Telecom is um, not compensated in, in any other way than I met uh, Steve over six years ago at an event and um, signed up for a service. And over the last couple of years, uh, they've consistently been 20% of my deals. And it was pretty exciting when you did 25 deals that I could get, you know, eight transactions or six transactions from Arch Telecom my first year. And now as we're approaching 500 transactions to, you know, bring that up into the 80 to 100 closings for a product that's only 40 bucks a month is pretty cool. Uh, so, Steve, once again, thanks for being on the call with us, and I'm excited to go through this presentation today. And we're going to jump into this idea of how to beat the top agent in your market. The reason that I decided to do this call is because I believe that a lot of agents have this mindset that they can only be as good as the top agent in their market. And sometimes that's like being the smartest kid in the absolute dumbest class. It doesn't mean a whole lot because if the top agent in your market sells 50 homes a year, you being number one may not mean that much. It may mean you're just selling 51. What I want you guys to do is to think bigger. I want you guys to think about how do I be the top agent in the nation? How do I be the top agent in my company and my brokerage? And when I started out, my goal was be, to be the top agent in my office. And then it was the county, and it was the state, and it's the nation. My goal is to absolutely always be improving. And I've been able to figure a few things out on how easy it is to beat top agents. And I'm talking about beating top agents in my local community, about beating top agents in a specific niche like REO or short sales, because they've got a couple of things wrong. And I'm gonna go through some ideas today on how I think you can kick your business up to another level. Now, IMSD is really about internet marketing. How do we leverage search engines, Craigslist, pay-per-click advertising, blogging, technology like the iPad to generate tons of leads and, and make a ton of money? So I'm not gonna dive into the internet really today at all. I'm gonna be talking about the other things that we need to do to be extremely successful. And the first one I think is mindset. So let's talk about the mindset of the top agent in your market. Most likely, the top agent in your market's income's been decreased by 40 or 50 percent. They have this idea that um, things are horrible, their brain stinks. And I've always found that it's much easier to uh, beat the competition when they have their head down pouting. So this is an opportunity. In fact, one of my favorite people, uh, Mr. Warren Buffett, probably says it best. He says that the greatest distributions of wealth happen in down markets, not up markets. When everything is going good, we're always running at the exact same pace. This is the opportunity now where we get to start shining, where we can pass the competitors. And that happens in down markets when people are having problems. Since the market changed, I've been able to double my business almost every year. We've never had a business where we sold less homes. And we're going on our seventh year into real estate. My goal is with my coach, and we'll talk about coaching throughout the call uh, as well, is I'm going to double next year. So how do I get from 500 to 1,000 transactions? And we're going to have to start thinking about some of these things that we're going to talk about in this call. Here's this uh, cycle that I see real estate agents doing, and I've done it for amount myself. We go and we spend money on something let's say a website or some new tool or radio, whatever the case may be, and we get no results. So we stop spending on it and then we switch to something else. The reason that this is a failure and a mindset issue is because most things are long-term ROI. It means your return on investment doesn't come right away. For instance, internet leads, they may not start buying, buying for three, six, 12, 24, 36 months. We're selling homes to internet leads that we generated five or six years ago. The question you have to ask is if you're gonna to commit to doing something new, something that we're gonna learn on the call today, are you willing, do you have the resources, time and or money, to give it enough time to get the real ROI? The next issue that I see is agents go out, they spend money on something, product X. They get no results, they keep spending the money on X, and then they go broke. I call this the phone book, the newspaper and the real estate magazine approach. Yeah, I gotta keep doing it because I've been doing it for a long time and everybody I know, they expect me to be there. Rush is flat out stupid. If 
you cannot get a trackable result, I'm talking about a phone call that you can actually track, a click that you can actually track, a lead or a closing, don't spend money on it. And that is the underlying principles of our business and especially IMSD. The next thing that I like is agents go out there, they see a competitor doing something. Hey, the top agent in my market has a billboard. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna get a billboard. We get no results. Then the competitor stops doing it. So you stop. The issue with that is that you normally go off and then copy the, what the competitor's doing next. And the competitor, when you copy them, they've probably never done anything to track the results. So you just keep on tra uh, copying bad behavior. I want to make sure that we stop that. You want to be the first person in your market doing things. I want to be on the front of the wave. My competition is out there copying what I did a year ago. They're not even thinking about the stuff I'm working on now because it's not even in their eyes. You've got to always be a step ahead of them. The mistakes that I see top agents making are uh, ego. They think nobody can beat them. I'm the top agent. I know commercial better than ever, anyone. Nobody can do more in REO than me, blah, 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 blah. They're spending too much money on expenses or staff. So they might be a top agent, but they're making no profit. That's not cool. That's called a nonprofit. There's lots of better nonprofits in real estate that you can put your money towards. Uh, they've gotten so big that they get bad customer service. They haven't evolved to the changing technologies. They aren't adopting uh, new practices. They got a flat out bad attitude where they don't understand that to be in business, you really got to make a profit. The next big mistake that I see agents making are legs. It's also an opportunity. So I want us to spend a few minutes talking about the legs of real estate. Now, this is a picture of Chad. Uh, Chad doesn't shave his legs enough. Not that I shave my legs, I guess, really often. Uh, these are not the legs I'm talking about. Here's the concept that I'm saying. How many legs does your chair have? Normally, a real estate agent has one leg. I'm an REO agent. I'm a short sale agent. I get my business from my sphere. Well, hello, people. We sold all of our sphere properties five or six years ago at the height of the market. They're still ticked off at us. We can't rely on something that could possibly end. Now, not that I don't want you guys to invest in your sphere, because it's a topic we'll talk about today as well. I just don't you know, want you to rely on it only. I think a good agent to have a secure, long-time business is gonna to need to have five or six chairs, or five or six legs to their chair. Why I say that is because if you kicked out one leg to your chair and you only had three legs left and you kicked out another one, you're gonna fall down. If you had eight legs to your chair and you kicked out three or four, you still have a steady business. I want you guys to start thinking about what are the different sources of business that you can focus on. Well, I outlined some sources of business for me. I get business from sign calls. Like I said, almost 20% of my actual closings come from sign calls. I get business from canceled expireds. We listed over 500 homes last year from the canceled expired service that um, Arch Telecom does for us. Uh, Fizbo's, not a huge source of my business, but it's important. Just sold, just listed, which is not what you guys are thinking. I'm not talking about those stupid postcards we send out. Uh, notice of default, notice of trustee sales, tenants, short sales, REOs, farming, builders, open houses, sphere and networking, marketing, and the internet. Those are probably the majority of opportunities for real estate agents at the moment. What I want you to do is of that list, I want you to pick, well, let's say four, five, six, eight, and start mastering some of those topics. Start building a business that can't be knocked down. You don't want to be the number one agent in your company because you sell a whole bunch of REOs and all of a sudden next year the REOs stop coming in and your house is gone. You don't want to be the top agent in short sales and all of a sudden the government changes something and short sales are no longer available. Same thing with the internet. Not that the internet's gonna go away. I'm not making the uh, vice president speech. What I'm saying is it could change. SEO could go away. Pay-per-click advertising could stop working. Social media could evolve. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. I guarantee you, 99% of your top competition is. They are betting on these one or two things. You know the agent in your market that did all the new construction builder sales? 
Yeah, he's not doing anything right now. He's working at Best Buy, or he's a title rep. The next thing I want to talk about, a way to beat top agents, is understand the motivation meter. The motivation meter is how do we motivate people at the absolute highest level? As we're going through the call today, I want to encourage you guys that if you have any ahas, questions, comments, that you're going to the IMSD fan page. But uh, if you have any questions for me personally, uh, just hit me up on Twitter, which is twitter.com forward slash Ben Kinney, and maybe we'll have a discussion about motivation meters because I think this is important. What I'm talking about are what are the carrots that motivate the people around us. And the people around me that I'm looking to motivate would be uh, other agents. I want to motivate them to accept my offers. I want to motivate them to work with me. I want to motivate them to join my team. Once they're on my team, I want to motivate them to do more business. Uh, my buyers, I want to motivate them to write an offer. My sellers, I want to motivate them to drop the price. My staff, I want to motivate them to do more. And motivation is a trick. And it's a trick that's almost always failed. And it's an item that's failed because most people try to motivate the people around them based on the way they are motivated personally. And we've talked about this before on calls, if any of you guys are returning, but The Five Love Languages is an amazing book, especially if you're having a little bit of trouble at home or um, you're having a hard time communicating with that little special someone in your life. But The Five Love Languages talks about how do we communicate with the other person in our life? And normally what happens is, you know, we, we like to receive love in gifts or in words of affirmation or acts of service or touch, things like that. So that's how we show love to somebody else. But what ends up happening is the person on the other side, the person that we love, doesn't like receiving love that way. So we go home and we have this huge fight. Hey, you know, I do all these things for you. I, I bought you these items. Um, I say all these nice things, and really what the person that you love might, um, the way they might receive love might just be, they just wanted to spend time with you. And I kind of learned that lesson with my family too, as I, you know, could buy them just about anything and take care of them financially and so on, but my dad would trade it all for a day of fishing with me. Now, in the workplace, I'm not encouraging you to touch your employees so much at least not inappropriately, what I'm asking you to do is figure out what motivates them. How can you get them excited? Most of us, especially high-performing agents, agents that want to be number one, we think that everybody's motivated by money. In reality, most of them, especially team members, aren't. They're motivated by a couple of other things. So I want you to think about how do you motivate your staff better? And I'll give you the list that works for me. I motivate some members of my staff by doing competitions. I have some people that work for me that never want to be beat. I might go in there and say, hey, I just want to let you know that Bob's beating you right now. And they will work their butt off. Or I'll do a competition. Hey, first one to uh, get this gets X, Y, Z, an iPad. Whatever reason, people jump out of the windows naked for iPads. Sometimes I just have to walk in and say, hey, you're doing a good job. I appreciate you. Words of affirmation will carry those people for a couple more days. Sometimes it's just cash. They're motivated by money. Sometimes it's fear of loss. Hey, if you don't do this, I'm going to fire you. You need to start figuring out. Everybody in your life, everybody that's in your company, how do you motivate them at the highest level? Well, the reason I bring this up as well is because the same thing happens when we're talking about buyers and sellers. Often, we go into a situation where we meet with a seller and we assume what they want is the highest price because we don't take the time to dig in deeper. Sometimes the seller doesn't want the highest price. Sometimes their motivation is really, how do I sell this thing fast because I really need to be where I gotta go. Sometimes it's just security. They wanna know more than anything, that they're going to have somewhere else to buy. Buyers, sometimes we often think that they want the best deal. It's not always the case. Sometimes they just want the right neighborhood. Sometimes they just want to feel good about the property. They don't want any repairs or so on. Make sure you dig in and understand what motivates them as well. Your competition is probably not taking that extra moment of time to love their staff, to love other agents in the market, 
to love their buyers and love their sellers and understand their motivation language, so to speak. The next area that I find that agents are having a huge problem with is their sphere. They just wait and stare at their little iPhone or Android. This would be a good social test to keep Chad overwhelmed. Hey, how many of you guys on the phone have an Android and how many of you guys have an iPhone? Go ahead and type it in the chat bar. If you have a, a Blackberry, just feel free to hang up now. Sphere, the agents are just sitting there staring at their phone waiting for people to call. Their sphere business is going down because they're not doing anything to work it. I consider my sphere like my field. It's up to me to plant the seeds and to water it and take care of it so that at some point in the year, I get to harvest that crop. My goal for every agent on my team is to make sure that they have a network of a thousand people that they haven't met that they get to work. From that, they get to work 500 Mets, people that they actually know or they have good contact information so they can tie a name to an email or a name to a phone number. I put the 500 Mets in the emails, my Arch Telecom leads, sign call leads, so on. The 200, that's my core sphere. If you're gonna join my real estate team, you have to fill out a spreadsheet that has 200 names, email addresses, phone numbers, social network addresses listed. And if you guys want a copy of that spreadsheet that I have, uh, go ahead and throw that up on the um, facebook.com forward slash IMS designation fan page and ask for it, and I'll have Chad throw it up there a little later today. From that 200 sphere, I'm going to identify a core group of people that are going to consistently give me those extra 20, 30, 40, 50 transactions every year. Those I call those the free deals. Now, I just saved you guys $400 a month in Brian Buffini coaching because you don't need it. What I'm saying is if you can get it down to this list, to this core group, this is all you got to do. You find a group of habit mets and you email them, you postcard market to them, you do something cheap and easy. You get your met group, the people that you've actually got contact information for, the people that you can tie your names and a piece of contact information to, and you mail them and you email them consistently. Your sphere, that core group, that 200 people, they're going to get mail, they're going to get emails, and they're going to get phone calls. And I'll go through the, how that breaks up consistently throughout the entire year. And then your core group, that good group of people that you love that are guaranteed to give you business, those are the people you're, they're going to get mailed, called, emailed. And my goal is to get a couple of visits in with them personally every single year. That top 200 people, and if you're on the team and you, if you're on the call today and you have a team, I want to make sure you're encouraging every member of your team to follow this plan. 200 people. They email everybody once a week called Hey Real Estate Fans, a once a week email. They're going to mail everybody once a month, 200 people times 40 cents in stamps. What are we talking about, Chad? 80 bucks. They're going to invest 80 bucks to make an extra 20 or 30 transactions. Are you kidding me? They're going to call everybody in their sphere once a month and actually ask for business. And then they're going to personally visit people three to four times a year. And by visit, I mean invite them to events that you're already going to. Invite them to real estate events or classes or go by their house. I like to invite people to things I'm already going to be at so I have to, don't have to do anything special. For instance, we're going to the outdoor cinema this day. We're going to be here at this event. Come with us, blah, blah, blah. If you do this, I guarantee you will add an extra 20 or 30 transactions to your business. You can't touch people this many times. Well, you can't touch people this many times personally. You'll go to jail. It'll be like a Michael Jackson video. You can't touch people this many times that are in your real estate business and they not think of you. You add all these things up, it equals 79 different touches in one year. That is a phenomenal amount of communications with the sphere. You do that to 200 people, you're guaranteed to get a ton of business. The next way that we're gonna dominate our competition is really hitting up the prospecting, where we actually pick up the phone and we go out and say, no longer am I gonna wait for my phone to ring, no longer am I gonna wait for the people to register on my website, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna shank uh, shake some uh, trees until some buyers or sellers fall out so I can actually get paid. 
I'm in the business to make some money, to make sure that my team is fed and my staff gets their bonuses. And to do that, I have to do prospecting. In my business, if I dial 52 people, and this is a study for over the last four years, if we dial 52 people, we'll get 12 to 15 people to answer. From that, we're gonna get at least one appointment. One appointment for a listing, one appointment for a buyer. You cannot call 52 people and not get an appointment. If you did, your phone's broke. It just doesn't work. You call 52 people, you get an appointment. So our goal is every day by noon on our team, we make 52 dials. Now, if you're in an internet lead generation business, this may transfer over to every day before noon, we're gonna make 52 emails. We're going to shake trees until we get that one appointment a day. Now, the areas that we're prospecting right now are canceled expireds, FISBOs, just sold and just listed, notice of uh, default, notice of trustee sales, tenants or renters, and our sign calls. I didn't say that already. I want to go through partially some scripts and dialogues that we use, but also the tools that we're using to make this prospecting business easier for us. Now, Arch Telecom provides us the sign calls. That means whenever somebody picks up one of my flyers or looks at one of our signs, when they call that number, it captures those phone numbers. And those phone numbers get put into a database that we can work consistently over time. I store up all my sign calls from 2004. And whenever I get a new listing in that area, or I have an opportunity in that area, I'll go through and call anybody that's called on any sign from that specific area. Canceled expires, we use technology to make sure that our canceled expires and FISBO leads together get delivered to us every single day. So I don't have to jump on the MLS and double check all those items. Just sold and just listed. Now, we talked earlier that we're not talking about those stupid uh, postcards. That's a waste of money, don't do that. I'm talking about, if I list a property at 1234 Main Street, I'm gonna jump onto a website and I'm gonna look up all the people within a, let's say, a 10 block radius of that house and I'm gonna call each person. There's technology tools out there that you can use to start pulling call data for a specific neighborhood. So if I took a listing at 1234 Main Street, I'm gonna jump on the phone or jump on the website, pull 200 people to call, and my team is gonna sit there, we're gonna call everybody. It's gonna sound a little something like, hi, this has been Kenny with the Home for Investment Real Estate team. This is just a courtesy call from your neighbor, Bob. He lives at 1234 Main Street. Bob just put on his home on the market for 334,000, and he asked me to invite all the neighbors to come over to the home this weekend. The home is gonna be open on Sunday between 12 and four, uh, and we wanted to give the neighbors an opportunity to pick who their new neighbor was gonna be. Also, what ends up happening is that many of the buyers that we're going to attract to our property, and we attract hundreds and hundreds of buyers to each listing we take, are going to be looking for something a little bit different. So if you're coming over on Sunday, could you think a little bit about who else in the neighborhood might think about selling? Who else has a property that might be bigger or smaller, just a little bit different? So I can make sure that if I have any extra buyers, I can take them over to that property. What that does, it tells everybody in the area that we're working, we're working hard, they've never got a phone call like that. It gets them out there prospecting for your next listing. And you get to have an open house that gets 40 or 50 people through it. You throw some prizes or some cookies or some brownies on top of that, it's gonna be like a party on Sunday. The next thing is notice of defaults. Notice of defaults is when a property goes 30 days late. As soon as they're 30 days late, a notice of default is uh, filed from their mortgage company. Notice a trustee sale usually comes 60 to 90 days after their very first late payment. You can get list of notice of defaults and notice of trustee sales from a variety of places. You can make prospecting calls to all those people. When I first started real estate, this is my entire prospecting list. I will call each one of those people. Hi, my name is Ben Kenny with the Home for Investment team. I call and ask you a couple questions about your property. If they didn't answer, I would leave that message. They would call me back. I wouldn't tell them anything else. If they did answer, I would just say simply, this is Ben Kenny with the Home for Investment real estate team. I have a buyer that might be interested in your property. Are you interested in selling? Now, they didn't know that I knew that their mortgage was late. I just asked them if they wanted to sell, assuming that 
they knew their mortgage was late, majority of them would say, you know, we might. I say, great. The first step for me is to go preview it and see if it matches what my buyers are looking for. I would go over there, preview it, and if it matched what any of my buyers are looking for, I tell them, great. I would, might offer to buy it myself, or I would say, you know, this is not an exact match for my buyers, but I sure could market it and help you get the thing sold if you're interested in selling it. This is the price that I think you could sell it for on the market uh, in a reasonable amount of time, and this is the price I think I could sell it to an investor for in a shorter amount of time. This is an excellent source of business, and depending on your market, this might be a huge opportunity. Tenants, the same thing. It's all about scripts and dialogues, which is why my team practices scripts and dialogues from 8.15 to 9 a.m., five days a week, and it's mandatory to be on our team that you show up and you do these scripts and dialogues practices. And we practice every possible call or conversation that we might make so that we become masters of our trade. Marketing is an area that I believe a lot of real estate agents, especially top agents, are failing. They do what I call ego marketing. They market all about themselves. They have the glamour shots from 10 years years ago that makes them look pretty, and they tell them about the awards they won and all that junk, how pretty their dog is, and they spend all this money advertising their company, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Instead of doing what really matters. See, we're marketing to consumers. The consumers really only care about one thing, that's themselves. If you're marketing to buyers, buyers are only going to care about themselves. They're going to want to know, how do I find a great property for a cheap price? So that's what your message needs to be. If you're marketing to sellers, they're going to want to know that you can get the home sold fast, how much you can sell their home for, and that you're confident and you're going to do more than the other agents. In marketing, it's all about your message. Combined with your image, and then the distribution channel that you choose. You need to make sure that you match your message to the actual end user. Many times we create one ad that we use everywhere, it's just not right. There's a different ad that you'll be using for buyers. There's a different ad that you'll be using for first time buyers. There's a different ad that you're gonna be using for all these other items. I'll go through and give you guys some examples of some of the marketing that we do. Our marketing, Since we're cheap, and we are cheap, mind you, we market from our signs. On each one of my for sale signs, there's a writer that goes on the top that says, buy this home and I'll sell your home for free. That's a marketing message. Top of every sign says, I've been Kenny listing, buy this home and I'll sell your home for free. I want everybody in town to know that it's one of our listings and that if they buy the home, I'll sell theirs for free. Any guess on why I would do that? It's pretty simple. Because I want to get buyers that are interested in buying and moving that think that they may not be able to get the amount of money they want for their home so they don't take the time to even look. I want to get them excited. The reality is most of them are not going to buy that actual home, but they're going to call me and ask me what the program is about. See, I'm marketing my message through the channel signs to the appropriate audience. Next place we market is flyers. I'll give you a couple examples on how we kick that up a couple notches. Radio, television, it's expensive, but extremely effective. The only way that we're effective in radio is that we're extremely aggressive, confident, if not cocky. The message that we need to take is that we're the most aggressive, we're the most dominant. Now, before I was a top agent in my market, I would often run ads that say the most aggressive agent in, the top agent in, because it's untangible. You can't really measure those statements, but I can run them all over the place. I like like companies that start advertising uh, their name plus international before they're actually even international because they have a much bigger dream. Do the same thing in your message. Make yourself bigger than you are. If you don't have a team, advertise yourself as a team because you have a lender and an inspector, maybe a part-time assistant. You have agency offices that can help you. You have a team. If people are going to start thinking about this inevitable question of if I had 6% to pay an agent, why would I pay an agent 6% to just get him when for the same exact price I can get a team? We're going to have to start competing with that. We advertise on display ads. We market to defaults, we market to tenant, and we market on the internet. Some of our most unique ads, and I'll give you a couple, 
couple examples would be uh, interview one of my competitors before hiring me to sell your home and I'll give you $500 off our marketing fee. Because I want you to know with 100% certainty that nobody does more to market a property than me and my team at. People call me all the time off those radio ads and say, do I really have to interview one of your competitors? And I laugh and say, well, only if you want to waste your time. I'll still give you the same deal. And I give them $500 off our marketing fee, and it's fine. Come up with aggressive, creative ads. If you need ideas for ads, run them by me. That's what we're here for. The funny thing is, is the ads that I run on radio end up being the ads I would put on a postcard. They end up being the scripts that I use in an email. They end up being the banner ads I run on websites. Because the marketing message is appropriate, and it can work through any sort of distribution channel. Our flyers, we did something simple, and this is a Steve Cortez, our arch friend's idea a long time ago. He said, man, if you're going to buy this system for... I think at that time it was $37.99 a month and probably still is. I don't know. Uh, take your price off the flyer. I said, Steve, why would I take the price off the flyer? He said, because if somebody knows the price, they're just going to drive away. And if you actually take the price away, they're going to call you to find out. And if they talk to you on the phone, do you think you'll have a better chance of getting them inside the home? Well, yeah, I figured if they called me, I could probably get them in there. And what I did is I took a whole bunch of listings where I got zero phone calls a month, and I increased my amount of phone calls by 100 times. Now, consistently, every day we're getting leads from our flyers because I took the price off. And it's a simple thing. You just got to tell your sellers in advance, otherwise they get all grumpy about it. Notice the flyer on the screen is... Um, has the price on it. The reason I have the price because this is the inside flyer. I give the sellers an inside flyer with price, but the ones we put outside don't. In fact, on the back of the flyer, we advertise 16 other properties with our Stellcom extensions on each and every one that do not directly compete with the property that I have on the front. And it's an optional program for sellers, but nobody ever opts out. It's a way for me to get 17 or 18 different ways to advertise to get people to call me off a single flyer. And all of our flyers are black and white because I'm cheap. And if somebody's outside the home, they can see in color. They're not issuing black and white eyes anymore. The next thing I want to talk about is multiple ways to get them to contact you. On moving trucks, on signs, on flyers, on internet ads, I'm going to be asking people to, hey, text the information in. So I'm going to be using a text service, a mobile service. I'm going to be saying, visit my website. I'm going to be giving them the phone number. Every form of marketing, I'm going to give somebody the opportunity to use whatever platform they prefer. Many times us agents say, email us. Maybe they don't want to email anymore. Email so last year. They should be saying, Facebook us, tweet us. They want to communicate on Facebook. They could be saying, text us. If any of you guys have kids on the call, you understand that nobody answers phones anymore. It's all about texting. The next way to dominate the top agent in your market is events. Events, I think, are something that agents are really missing the ball on. They are not leveraging events to generate community support, to get free marketing, and to generate leads. I'm going to give you a couple of different events that I think every agent should be doing. The first one is teaching people what we teach in IMSD, which is internet marketing. Real estate agents are a little bit spoiled because everybody wants to teach us something because we have a little bit extra money to spend because our cost for sale, our income's higher. But small businesses have no resource. It's why we host social media training events at our office for businesses, nonprofits, and the community to go to. Now I'm getting local hotels to give up their space for free and host it there. I'm getting radio stations to advertise our social media training events for free because they want to be a part of it. And you get the consumers coming in, and you get to stand up there for an hour and teach them something, how to create a fan page or whatever. And they end up looking at you and saying, this is the expert in marketing. If I ever sell a house, this is the guy I'm going to use. And every week you end up getting, you know, you'll start at 10 and you'll work your way up to 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 people. Pretty soon you have a steady way to grow that database and grow that sphere. I cannot teach a social media marketing class and not walk out with an appointment for a builder, a buyer lead, or a listing presentation every single time. The next class that I'd make sure that you're hosting is, uh, depending on your market, how to do a short sale. Why is a short sale a good idea? How to do a loan modification. Financial related classes and or 
The other option would be how to do how to buy a foreclosure, how to buy a short sale. Everybody wants to know about it. You're going to end up getting 10, 20, 30, 40 potential buyers in a room to do this. Now, the last event we successfully did the other day, September 10th, and we called it the Amazing Home Race. On September 10th, we did a live event where we invited uh, a bunch of people to come out where they had to tour through 25 of our open houses. When they went through each one of the open houses, they had to answer a question, and the question was mathematical-based or kind of tricky. The person that got the most amount of answers right ended up winning $10,000 cash that I got a mortgage company to give. We ended up getting 400 buyers to show up that day. They were all wearing Ben Kinney's Amazing Home Race t-shirts, driving around to my listings. My listings on average got 20 buyers through it in one day. They got to come back afterwards and go to a barbecue that I got a restaurant to pay for. And we grew our database by over 650 people and had 400 buyers show up in one day. Now, you can do big events like this. I contracted with a company called Scavenger, S-C-V-N-G-R, to put on our event. And there's an awesome guy there named Alex. If you guys decide you want to do one, give him a call. Or if you want to watch the video on how our event went, go to youtube.com forward slash Mr. Ben Kinney, and you'll see the uh, advertising commercials and also the after event video on how the day went. But you can do these little events like the $10,000 one, and just pare it down. You could do, all right, visit these five open houses and get a drawing in for an iPad. And you get your inspector, your lender, your title, whoever, to all throw in 100 bucks, and you guys go out and buy an iPad. Or make your seller pay for it. Who cares? Give out an iPod. Give out a $100 cash. It doesn't matter. People love to do it, and they have fun doing it. And you just be the guy in town that's hosting these live events that give away prizes every single month. Live events, I think, will build more market appreciation, more market share, more of an image than anything else you can do. Heck with your silly billboards and your newspaper ads and all that other junk that just goes down in the wasted category. Start doing fun, awesome, and amazing events. The next idea that I want to share with you guys that I know top agents aren't doing is using this idea of leveraged leads. What I mean by leveraged leads is how do I get leads for free? How do I market things that don't cost me a ton of money? And I'll give you three really good ideas that you can use to generate leads right now. And it doesn't matter if you're a brand new agent or if you're a top agent because you can start doing this right away. The first one is this idea of a seller assistance program. This is where you go to your local builders in town and say, I'm interested in marketing your properties for free. This is a new construction program. In exchange for the opportunity to list anybody's home where they have to sell their home first before they actually move in. This gives you the ability to market to builders, for the builders to give you all the move up buyers, and to build some great rapport because at some point they're going to hire you to do the actual listing of their new construction products. The next thing that you could do is advertise HUD properties. Now, HUD properties are awesome for agents because HUD and the HUD contract says that any agent can market any HUD property without the permission of the listing agent. And in most states, there are hundreds and hundreds of HUD properties that you can market for free, which means you can take all those HUD properties and you can create print ads, if you still do it. You can create flyers. You can create classes on how to buy them. You can do Craigslist posts on them. You can blog about them. You can do any of that. You don't even need the permission of the listing agent because the HUD contract says that anybody can do it. Those are just free listings. A lot of times the difference between an agent that gets a thousand Craigslist leads a month like I do and an agent that gets only one is because they don't have any properties to post on Craigslist. But this little concept of posting all the HUD properties in your area solves that. The next thing would be advertising uh, REOs or short sales. Many times the REO agents in your market don't do a whole lot of marketing themselves. The reason they don't do marketing because they're so busy out there servicing the HUD properties and most of them don't have a buyer's agent team. So communicate with builders, HUD agents, and REO agents to get permission to market their properties for them. Most of them are not going to care. If I could get an extra 10 or 20 listings from agents in my market to post on Craigslist, that's going to be an extra 100 leads a month for me. 
that is huge. For 100 leads, that's going to be an extra couple closings. A couple closings for me means an extra 7500 per closing because our average price is 250000 Seller presentations are, I believe, another way to beat top agents. See, top agents are showing up with that old, outdated flip book. You know the flip book I'm talking about where they go in there and they give examples of their flyers, like a seller really cares what the flyer looks like, and they give all the stats about their company and all the junk that nobody cares about. You need to start dominating and making fun of the agents in your market that use flip books because they're outdated. They're not cool anymore. You need to be showing up with your iPad doing your iPad listing presentation, or if you want to get all tricky tricky, you need to be picking up the Pico projector. The Pico, P-I-C-O projector, will plug into your cell phone or your iPad and do a 50 inch presentation on anybody's wall or their ceiling. Isn't that cool? You're like, here, let me take this projector that's in the size of my hand that costs 200 bucks, and let me do a 50 inch wide presentation on your wall. Now that's a way to start impressing sellers. And if you have a live internet connection on your iPad or on your laptop, you can just go through right through on the website and show them everything so you don't have to cuddle. You know how the agents cuddle at the end of the kitchen table where the seller and the, the wife and the husband get there and you guys are all cuddled up on the end of the table? You don't need to do that anymore because you've got a 50-inch projector that fits in your suit pocket. Or do it on your iPad. That's cool too. The next way to kind of kick up your seller presentations and Please excuse this unphotoshopped version of me that you're going to see on the screen. Uh, is to do your listing presentation in videos. Do your price reduction scripts in videos. Do your staging recommendations in videos so that before a seller ever meets with you, you can say, hey, I'm going to send you three videos. I would like you to watch them before I come over. So when you sit down, they're pretty much going to say, yeah, I watched the videos. I'm ready to list. Often, we'll target all these sellers in our area that live outside of the state. And we will just find them, call them, ask them if they're interested in selling, ask permission to send them a listing of our, our uh, video of our marketing plan and send them the video. Every one of you needs to put your listing presentation on video. Now you don't have to be in front of the camera, which I'm gonna recommend for myself. You could just do screenshots and talk over it. You could use GoToWebinar or Chad, what's the job thing, the screen capture one? iJot, I think. iJot will do screen capture over a PowerPoint on your screen or whatever you want to do. And just start recording these videos. This is important for a couple of reasons. As you start growing and you start building your team, your team gets to watch those videos so they master the listing presentation too. They get to hear you do it. So you don't have to go role play your listing presentation 50 times every time you hire a brand new agent. They just get to watch the video and start saving time. You also get all this information about pricing, why it's important to price your properties right. Uh, great agent down in um, uh, San Diego, Chris Heller, has some great videos on his website that are worth checking out about marketing, why he's different and why it's important to price. Uh, top agents uh, like Fred and Kevin down in uh, Arizona are doing videos for sellers where they get to go online and learn about short sales and loan modifications. This is important because a lot of people are too embarrassed to call you right away because they don't understand what's going on. Give them information about loan modifications and short sales in a short two, three minute video and then give them some variety of videos to watch. When they're ready, they'll call you. Pricing is another one of these things that I think agents fail at. They list properties too high. They don't consistently get price reductions. Guess what? If your property's been on the market for 30 days and you don't have any showings, you're overpriced. Most likely, if your home has been on the market for 30 days and you don't have any offers, you're probably overpriced. With a couple of exceptions in niche markets or areas where the market's so stinking slow, you should just move. Or in price points where there's only a couple of sales a year. Otherwise, you're probably priced wrong. But you need to have a better way to go to your clients and say, hey, the market's changing. And I'll give you some scripts and dialogues that we're using that will help you better get pricing, uh, price reductions, and price the properties from the beginning. The first thing that I want you guys to memorize is this simple script. Mr. Mr. Seller, the reality is that the price that I tell you today is most likely than the price I would tell you in six months or a year. Because our market is declining, pricing is going down. It's going to cost you money to not price your property correctly today. They will probably respond back with, 
uh, disbelief. I don't believe either the market's going down or misunderstandings. They don't get it. So every listing presentation that I go on, I draw this simple triangle. And I'll draw it on a blank piece of paper. I'll flip over something. I'll draw it on their forehead if I could. And I just draw this triangle. I get these numbers from a magazine called DS News. And I look at this magazine every single month. And in the back of the magazine, they have everything broken out by state. And on the state section for Washington State, these are the numbers that it says. What I do is I explain on this triangle. Here's some information that you may or may not know. Right now, one out of 10 or 10% of all people in our market are currently 30 days late on their mortgage. That means they could look at 10 of your neighbors, one of them is 30 days late on their mortgage. That's scary, isn't it? The UE number, 9.3%, that's the unemployment rate for Washington. It's probably because one out of 10 of them are currently unemployed. Here's some more numbers you may not know. In Washington State, in our area, six out of every 100 homeowners are currently 90 days late on their mortgage. That's 5.98%, that's the 90 day default rate. Wow, that starts becoming scary because people that are 30 days late on their mortgage almost never recover. And people that are 90 days, never recover. Nobody gets out of that 90 day foreclosure rate, so they're gonna foreclose. The 2.29% is the number of homes in my state that are currently already foreclosed on that have not been put on the market as an REO. And the 0.45%, that's the homes on the market currently as REOs of the total households in Washington state. So you start taking a look at this triangle and explain it to sellers that, hey, what do you think is gonna happen? With all these people that are in default, one out of 10, 30 days late, six out of 100, currently 90 days late, they're gonna get foreclosed on. And you have 2.29% of homes are currently foreclosed on that are not on the market, and you only have a small, tiny percentage of homes that are currently for sale by the banks. Do you think that all these homes coming on the market are gonna make home prices go up or go down? They're gonna answer the question for you. And they're gonna start to understand that your aggressive pricing strategy is actually saving them money in the future. You're not trying to steal from them. You're trying to get them the most amount of money. And the most amount of money they can get is by pricing their properties correctly in the beginning. Another area that I see that agents make a mistake on is they are not niching themselves. And I don't mean the agent that says, I help 55 plus people and that's all I do. And I'm not talking about the agent that says, I'm a commercial agent and that's all I do. Or blah. I'm talking about why don't create different niches. These are just some of the logos of some of the brands that I use on listing presentations. I have the new home group. I have the home for investment real estate team. I have Kenny Commercial Real Estate. I have REO Northwest. It depends on who I'm talking to. depends on what card I'm going to give them. I have seven different types of business cards that I hand out at any moment. It depends on who I'm talking to. I'm not going to give a regular homeowner my new home card, and I'm not going to give my REO card to a builder. When I meet with a bank or an asset manager, I'm gonna give them my REO card. For the 30 bucks it costs you to order more cards, you might as well order 10. Just create a logo where it all kind of blends together. Notice on all my logos, you can see on the REO Northwest card, I put a division of Home for Investment, which is my actual S corporation that I own. Create multiple brands. If you wanna be the neighborhood expert, that's fine. Everything you send out to that neighborhood, you're the neighborhood expert of that one. Doesn't mean you can't be the neighborhood expert of another one. Make sure your message matches your audience. Create multiple, multiple niches. Now the 12th way I think we can beat top agents is start recruiting talent. What I mean is get more people on your team, get better assistance, start getting good, strong people that'll help leverage yourself. We can do way more with leverage than we could on our own. My success really has been, how do I give up 50% of my income and only make 50% per transaction, but do it across a thousand transactions instead of just 10 or 20 or 30, whatever I could do on my own. I would much rather do that and help a, help a whole team of people make a much better life than me just have a mediocre life by myself. My goal when I came out of this great class with Chad was I had this vision and my vision was how do I make 10 people millionaires? And I knew that if I could help make 10 people millionaires, I would myself become a 10 millionaire because we get success through people. I wanna encourage you to 
uh, when hiring people to your team, your business, your brokerage, don't hire losers. The reason is, is we often say, oh, you know, I'm not doing very good in business. I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm dying here. And we go and we hire them to our team. See what happens when you hire a loser? They just suck on your team too. We don't want that to happen. You need to hire top people. There's no reason why you shouldn't be calling the top agent in your market and asking them to join your team. What's going to happen? I'm currently calling the top agents in my market's staff and asking them to work for me. Why not? They know all the, what those people do. Go out there. Hire the top staff. If you have a top agent and they've trained their top staff to be good, get them to work for you. Who cares? Get their buyer's agents. Hire people. Develop good, aggressive, and motivated people. Don't hire losers. When you're hiring them, make sure that you're hiring the right personality types. Now, there's a variety of different personality tests you can use. You can use DIS tests. You can use ABAs. There's a free DIS test on the Anthony Robbins website. Chad, you're giving me some recommendations for some other tests that we could give. Strength Finders 2.0, anything. Marcus Buckingham just did a new book called Stand Out, and he has a personality test as well. But it's important that you're getting the right personality on your team. The mistake that agents make all the time is they hire people to work on their team just because they like them, not because of the right match for their particular uh, position. Now, in my business, I want somebody that's a high I and a high S to be a buyer's agent. Or if I have internet leads and a ton of internet leads, I want somebody that's a high I maybe even a high C because it takes a lot of attention to detail to work internet leads over a long period of time. My listing presentation, my listing specialist, I want them to be a high B and a high I because I need them to be able to get price reductions and be direct. If you hire a high I to be your assistant, they're gonna spend their whole time talking and no time doing. It's important that you come up with a process for hiring the right individuals. Once you have a process and you know what personality types you're gonna be hiring, it's important that you actually uh, find ways to attract them. And these are the ways that I'm currently getting my talent. I'm advertising on Craigslist for agents. I'm advertising on Craigslist for um, staff. I'm outsourcing staff. I have virtual assistants that work for me in the Philippines, and I got them from myoutdesk.com. At my outdesk, they give me assistants that work for $6 an hour in the Philippines, and they're better looking than me, smarter than me, they work harder than me, and so on. I'm also using college interns that work for free. We currently have four college interns uh, that are working in my office, doing our pendings, doing paperwork, doing our postings, yada, yada. I do email campaigns out to all the agents in the market. I just have my virtual assistants go to the local board websites and copy down everybody's email addresses and phone numbers and names of brokerage and so on. And we just do email campaigns. Are you looking to join a team? Do you want to change of blah? I do cold calls. And I do inbound telemarketing. What I say is every time somebody calls on one of my listings, I'm going to ask them a question. Hey, I appreciate you calling on 1234 Main Street. The price of that property is, and it's still available. When do you plan on showing a buyer? Fantastic. Let me ask you a question. Uh, have you thought about doing anything different in your real estate business? I ask every single person. Don't call me on one of my properties unless you want to try to get recruited because I'm always hiring talent. I'm asking my sphere and I'm putting it out to the world, letting people know that I'm hiring. In Washington State, I'm always hiring the right person. I'm doing ads on the radio, letting people know that we need additional help to service our over 10,000 buyer leads and over 350 listings. We're always consistently putting it out to the world that we need talent. Now, I may not be hiring anybody at the moment, but for the right person, I'll always hire. You know, you got to ask the question, when would you hire the top quarterback in all of football, Chad? Chad would hire him any single day because he was the number one. I'm always hiring the right people. You put a plan in place that, in, that includes these seven or eight different ways to get talent, your business starts growing. I don't know why everybody on this phone call is not currently uh, using free interns. Why are you not going to your local college, your community college, or your university and getting free staff? It's free. They should be making your flyers and doing your marketing and doing your blog posts and doing your Craigslist things. They're free. If you want to kick it up a notch and you want more long-term, then you should be using VAs. And at some point, you should be building your business up and get to that next level. Because I know the power of leverage. The power of leverage says, 
that we can do 10 or 20 times more things with people than by ourselves. Now, I had some ideas on how do we do better in the market. And I gotta tell you that this last way, the 13th way to beat the top agent in your market, I think will probably change your world. At some point, this will be the reasons why you're selling 100 or 200 more transactions than any other agent in your market. I want the number two agent to be embarrassed to say they're number two because you're doing so well. You get what I'm saying? The 13th way that we are going to really be dominating agents online. The organizer has ended the session and this call will be disconnected. Goodbye.